Some of the headlines coming out of the recent mass shootings uh, shows a stark contrast, uh, including uh, the the headline out of Uvalde uh, and the the report is that the Texas gunman's family refused to illegally buy him guns. Somehow he's still able to get his hands on those firearms. Uh, but when it comes to the mass shooting in Highland Park, uh, it was a different story. Uh, the father in that uh, particular case, the suspect, signed off on the individual getting a FOID card. Uh, as a person under 21 years old, Illinois, of course, has the firearm owner's identification card, and it's required if you want to buy guns or ammo in the states, but you've got to be able to uh, survive any kind of background check or uh, not have any certain types of what they call prohibitors uh, on your application. It is Springfield's Morning News. I'm Greg Bishop on 92.7 WMAY, Springfield's News and Talk, and let's uh, let's get to this issue of the FOID card. So yesterday, uh, Illinois State Police announced that uh, they've got new rules uh, that they're implementing uh, through the Joint uh, Committee on Administrative Rules concerning the FOID card and clear and present danger reports. Uh, And why this is the case is because in 2019, the suspect in the Highland Park shooting was visited by police twice. The first time was after a reported attempted suicide. They came, they saw, they had mental health evaluation, take care of it, so there weren't any uh, further actions. But then months later, there was reports that the suspect at that time, uh, in 2019, had threatened his family. And local police showed up, they confiscated knives, and they filed a clear and present danger report to Illinois State Police. And that clear and present danger report didn't really come into play whenever that suspect and his father went to go get a FOID card for the suspect months after that. And then the suspect was able to legally purchase guns, including the rifle he allegedly used in the July 4th Highland Park mass shooting. This after you have other failures of the FOID card system that law-abiding citizens have to have in order to get a firearm or buy ammunition in the state. Uh, you had the uh, the incident that happened years ago up in Aurora at a warehouse where a disgruntled employee who had a FOID card, uh, even though that FOID card was revoked by state police, uh, he was still able to get a FOID card and purchase weapons. Uh, and uh, that ultimately led to other changes, but uh, that individual in that Aurora shooting had a FOID card despite having a conviction in another state. So there's some serious issues here. Uh, And Illinois State Police Director Brendan Kelly a couple of weeks ago he addressed the question of uh, the the Highland Park uh, suspect uh, getting a FOID card despite there being a clear and present danger report. Here's what um, uh, the Illinois State Police Director Brendan Kelly had to say uh, about that particular issue. And if you look at the report that was understandably submitted by the Highland Park Police Department in response to the information that they had, and then you look at the law that, with regards to clear and present danger, what the statute requires, what is that threshold, that did not meet that threshold. That, that, that the consensus from uh, old analysts and new analysts alike, we, we vetted it multiple times, would that have met the threshold? And the consensus is no. After that point, there being no new development, no additional arrest, no additional criminal record, no new mental health prohibitor, nothing that indicated that the individual had been uh, checked into a, a mental health facility that requires a new report, no, no basis for a firearms restraining order had been filed or an order of protection, all the things that are under the law that would be able to help us stop from issuing a, a firearms identification card, none of those factors were present at the time. That's uh, the Illinois State Police Director talking about the process uh, of getting that clear and present danger report from local police, but it not really playing into uh, get the individual getting a FOID card. So Illinois State Police yesterday announced new rules and emergency rules that were filed. Uh, and to talk about those emergency rules, joining us now is State Senator John Curran. He is on the Joint Committee on Administrative Rules, and they will oversee this. Uh, but, uh, Senator, your reaction, what exactly do these emergency rules do when it comes to addressing the clear and present danger reports? So, Greg, uh, great to be with you. Um, so. What the rule does, and I didn't hear that from the audio you played from the director, but there's been kind of two versions I've heard from the state police as to what happened here. An alternate version was that report was not kept on file because of their own department rule 
that was put in place under the uh, Governor Quinn's administration that required disposal of the report if there was not a finding of clear and present danger. The law does not require a disposal of that report. And um, this was just simply an instance of the department tying its own hands and not using the full uh, extent of the authority under the FOID Act. What the department is now doing is going to the four corners of the law and using exercise and all the authority that the legislature has given them in administering this FOID program in screening out and identifying applicants that require further investigation or <clears throat> on their face are not, um, should not have, a FOID card should not have access to firearms in this state. So what we're looking at is um, a, a announcement of a rule, ch- an emergency rule uh, that's uh, really just sticking within the, the lines of, of what they're already allowed to do? Yes. So they were already allowed to do this, but for whatever reason, back in 2013, the department, you know, limited themselves even even further than what the law limited them. And in this instance, that created a hole or a gap in their screening process that the uh, shooter in Highland Park got passed. I, I would, Greg, you know, in comment to the director's, uh, the audio that you played, I, I would take issue uh, having reviewed that report. You know, I was an assistant state attorney in Cook County for 19 years. Um, that report on its face should have provoked additional investigation by the state police. What we have not heard is, was there any further investigation into that clear and present danger report? Because if they just took it on its face, Greg, that report had a juvenile in the home, an outcry witness that said the individual threatened to kill everyone in the home and had weapons in their bedroom. You had two adult witnesses on that report too, presumably the individuals that the juvenile outcried to, they were afraid to come home. And the, the Highland Park police noted that while the, uh, the murderer uh, denied uh, making the threat, he did say that he had been on uh, taking, um, using illicit drugs recently and was depressed. And the Highland Park police noted that the murderer and his mother were both evasive in answering questions. So to take that report on its face and that denial and then say we didn't meet some threshold, I, I, I would just disagree with that. And it's a threshold that's not there in the law until an appeal. So, um, you know, I think, I, I think on both avenues here, there were just failures. Senator, we've got, of course, um, the issue of the the FOID card uh, and uh, the 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 clear and present danger report here, and seeming to uh, not really take that into account uh, around 2019 into 2020. Uh, and, and surely you're fully aware and remember this, but the FOID card was backlogged. We had people waiting months and months and months to be able to get their FOID card even renewed, let alone initially applied. Did that play into this? You think the uh, the backlog uh, and just uh, the way they were processed things and trying to clear out that backlog that they didn't do due justice. And what does that say for the FOID card in general? Is it worth it? Well, I mean, you know, Greg, the the back, the backlog at that time in my office, the new applicant was running about 60 to 90 days from the complaints and the individuals we were helping through the process. And a renewal was anywhere from four months to a year. Amazingly, this this juvenile applicant got his through the system in 30 days. He applied in December and was granted his FOID in January. So, um, you know, that I haven't really heard any accounting on, but if the FOID program, I mean, more to your comment, if the FOID program is not going to catch individuals like this, where there were readily identifiable prohibitors from possessing a firearm available, um, in the screening process, if it's not going to catch this, then it does call into question the value of the entire FOID card system. Senator John Curran with us, state senator on the Joint Committee on Administrative Rules. Uh, This obviously is going to be something you guys will bring up and discuss with emergency rules filed by Illinois State Police to deal with this. Um, But uh, something else, too, uh, Senator, that uh, that I'm curious your thoughts on just briefly here at the the tail end, and we've got limited time, but um, schools are getting ready to start back up. Uh, You've got COVID-19. We're still in an emergency. Uh, Apparently, Illinois is still a disaster area, according to the governor's proclamations that have gone down now since March of 2020. 
2020. Uh, what should parents expect um, going into school with the prospect of, you know, teachers are going to have to vaccine and uh, test? Uh, are, they, are parents still going to have to con- combat schools and whether or not their kids are going to be excluded because of being close contacts? Uh, what's uh, the conversation been like with JCAR? I, you know, we have not seen any changes from the State Board of Education or the Department of Public Health coming before us. And my fear is we're going to have the same disruption we had last year where schools put their plan in place. They were given autonomy at the local level. And then at the, at the last minute, a week before school starts, Department of Public Health and the State Board of Education dropped new rules and took um, standardized the process and really threw chaos into the start of the school year. That is what we must avoid this year. And whatever the State Board of Education is going to put in place, it needs to happen quickly so it has an opportunity for review, feedback from school districts on the ability to implement, and everyone, all parents know in plenty of time to prepare for the school year. We don't want that disruption at the last minute that we got last year. So we, we, we need to get off to a good start in school this year. And, and so it is really incumbent upon the department to uh, the Pritzker administration to put forward their plan for the upcoming school year as soon as possible. State Senator John Curran, greatly appreciate your time this morning. We'll definitely be talking again soon. All right. Thank you, Greg. It is Springfield's morning news. I'm Greg Bishop on 92.7 WMAY Springfield.